Well, here we are again, ladies and gentlemen, with Interesting Ideas, a radio program designed to help you be more interesting and have more interesting ideas. Because if you do, you'll have greater insight, maybe greater influence, maybe even make an impact on your world and the world, and perhaps uh, have true income success. And that's not just money. It is that the good things will come to you. That's what we try and help people do. Live and work and create a better life in business and actually make the world a little better place because you are and someday were here. As I say, I'm going to die soon. And uh, whether you know it or not, most of that is also true for you. You see, it all depends on what you mean by soon. I'm not going to talk about the uh, Easter or the Passover, uh, the holiday that is today. Uh, you will do that if it's important to you, and you do. You know, the Passover celebration, the Monday, Thursday service, and uh, uh, those are all pretty sacred and oftentimes uh, very holy events. But I was also reminded a number of years ago when I was very much involved in uh, religious missionary broadcasting, and we were broadcasting all over the world. We had listeners all around the world, huge, big radio station. I oftentimes say it's amazing that uh, what I can do now with a uh, simple podcast studio uh, in my office, in my home even, uh, I can reach as many people if possible, all over the world that I could with those big, huge, powerful radio stations that uh, uh, literally it took two diesel engines running the generators to create enough electricity for sending those radio signals all around the world. And I had the awesome responsibility of you know being on the air. And uh, I was always reminded of the fact that I better not waste my uh, listeners' time with stupid stuff. And obviously, uh, the cost of running those stations and all of that diesel fuel, uh, that meant that uh, I should be a pretty good steward of the programming that I did. I tried to live up to that. But during one of those times, uh, we got a letter from, uh, and this was a, a regular listener from Jamaica, uh, who had talked to us uh, always by writing a letter you know there, there was there was no texting there was no uh, email nothing of that nature you, if you wanted to if you wanted to communicate with somebody you you had to send an expensive telex or telegram or you had to write a letter that's what it was we got a letter it was from jamaica and he said i really like your program stan uh, but uh then he paused you could just almost hear him pause and he say but don't you guys ever talk about anything but god don't you talk about anything but God? <laughs> well, of course we do. We do it all the time. And so I really changed my radio programming is that certainly the religious message that I believed in was strong. But we did all kinds of other things. And, of course, uh, that drove some of the religious people crazy. But, you know, we not only played Christian or religious music. We played other kinds of music. And we would talk about baseball. We'd talk about sports. We'd talk about books. Uh, we would talk about the news and uh, make that as a part of the conversation. And we, we had, we had the spirit of stuff and we oftentimes had a little meditation that went along with it. And uh, it was very effective. We had many, many listeners. Uh, and that changed my life in senses, you know, Hey, don't you guys ever talk about anything but God? Um, and I would pass that on to any of you who have great causes. Don't you ever talk about anything but politics? Don't you talk about anything but sports? Don't you talk about anything but, you know, business? Are you interesting? And what I have found in my life as a business performance coach is that those men and women who were most successful were truly, to use the term, renaissance people. Uh, they had lots of interest. And uh, they wouldn't just talk you know, about insurance and golf. 
<laughs> they could talk about all kinds of other things that would be of interest to people. And as a result, uh, as one of my friends said, he said, actually, most of the time when I sell insurance, I don't even talk about insurance. <laughs> I listen to them talk about themselves. And I talk about what they want to talk about. And at the very end, I oftentimes make a suggestion. And guess what? You know, they've had such a good time, they buy it. <laughs> and that's kind of the secret of my success. Uh, I was asked one time to make a, tell young people how to be good salesmen. And he said, I got up and said, I want to tell you the secret of being good salesmen and women. By that time, that had been included. And he simply said, here's my secret. Don't sell. <laughs> well, obviously, then he went on, but you get the point. So I'm not going to talk about God, but what I'm going to talk about is something I really like. Very much part of the work I do, based on my work in Arizona, <clears throat> was working with uh, the Dude Ranch Association, and I got very much involved, and we have a lot of podcasts, Cowboy Up podcast, working with uh, the people in the Western tradition. And this is a magazine, it's called True West. It's one of my favorite magazines, and uh, it's all about the West and cowboys and Western history. And uh, I know the people who run the magazine. They're really good people, wonderful stories. And I'm holding up my favorite copy. Now, those of you on the radio can't see it, but just imagine it's it's a regular. But there is a picture of that character who was known many years ago as the Lone Ranger. And it said... The real Lone Ranger was Bass Reeves, okay, was Bass Reeves, the greatest lawman and the real hero behind the mask. Well, let me tell you what I'm doing with it. By the way, <laughs> subscribe to True West Magazine. You know, if you have any interest at all, you know, it's, 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 it's not a big corporate thing. It's basically a, a family business, uh, really, in many ways. And, uh, uh, a group of neat little people, uh, very talented and very, very committed to their work. Uh, they do the work. I think a lot of them. But the point here is, there's this big argument about critical race theory going on in America today. And that is the idea that we teach that, you know, Everything uh, must center about the fact that there was the slave experience for black people. And as a result, in effect, you know, we have to do a lot of things to pay reparations to make up for all of those things. That all of the bad things that are in America came from that. And in effect, that those of us who are white should feel guilty and uh, those people who are black uh, and African American, they obviously need to uh, have some things done for them or certain things given to them, uh, because that we have to figure out how we atone for or do something about the uh, racial division that obviously is a part of our culture. I don't think it's nearly as bad as people tend to make because, uh, obviously the critical race theory business uh, one of the primary spokesmen for it is a woman who makes about $25,000 for each gig she gives on it. So it is a little bit of a political movement and certainly a bit of a commercial movement. But here's what I want to say. Do we teach our children? I would say every African-American child should know the story of Bass Reeves. Now, let me tell you. Uh, he may not have been the inspiration behind the Lone Ranger, but he could have been. But what Bass Reeves is, is in the history of the famous lawman, you know, and we, we think of, you know, uh, the uh, Wyatt Earp. You know, we think of Bat Masterson. Uh, we, we think of those legendary Western lawmen. But actually, the greatest lawman of all was Bass Reeves. Born a slave. After the Civil War, went out west and became one of the best and toughest 
of lawmen. But not only was he good, but he prided himself that oftentimes he didn't have to shoot them. And he didn't have to kill them. Now, he did shoot some, and he did kill some. But he prided himself that so many of these guys who were bad guys, I mean bad, bad guys, he caught them. He rounded them up. He grabbed them, put them in irons, put them on the horse, and took them in. It is an incredible legend about an incredible man who... uh, in many, many ways, <laughs> helped tame the Wild West. Bass Reeves. Ever heard that name? Now you have. And you better look it up. And uh, you perhaps want to find the story. But all I'm simply pointing out is, <laughs> in effect, you know, we can talk about a lot of things. And most of the stuff that we're talking about today is divisive. You know, everybody could read the story of Bass Reeves and be proud. And particularly if you're a young young man of the African American heritage, you could say, Wow. That was quite a policeman. That was quite a lawman. Boy, would I like to be like Bass. Why aren't we doing that? Why aren't we doing things like that? There are an incredible amount of, and particularly in the West, you wouldn't, you know, there there were the Buffalo soldiers who were the black soldiers who went out there, and they were called Buffalo because their black faces, they were given that name by the Indians. Uh, The Buffalo soldiers and the Buffalo cowboys. And we don't have to go very, very far to find, and of course, there are some incredible heroes that we can rally around just as much as we can rally around the white people or the Indian. By the way, the uh, Indian leadership, there was, and we talk about some of the bad, but you know, the Geronimos and the Sitting Bull, and there's some incredible stories of some of the most courageous and effective leadership that you'll find. And oftentimes the difficult and even bitter and Oftentimes, long wars between not only Indian tribes who fought each other, but of course, the Indian tribes who were very much uh, opposed to the uh, growing invasion of settlers and cowboys and ranchers who were making their way into the West, and along with the cavalrymen and uh, that uh, came with them. Yeah, there's there's a lot of bad bad things that happened. And there's a lot of good things that happen, too. So could I just suggest that maybe one of the best ways to bring us together is to think about things like that. Uh, The Lone Ranger was a hero. (laughs) You know, justice in the American way, you know. And uh, could it be that the uh, inspiration for the Lone Ranger, (laughs) love the picture. You can tell that the Lone Ranger is is an African-American black guy. Uh, but he's dressed exactly as the Lone Ranger was in the famous uh, movies and uh, television shows. Nothing earth-shaking about my program today, but I think it's pretty good to take some time to talk about things that bring us together, things that we can all enjoy together, uh, things that we can say, in spite of our differences, this was good, this was good. And uh, in doing so, uh, we pronounce blessings on one another. And so today is a holiday that Americans uh, and people around the world celebrate in terms of the Christian festival commemoration. Jewish people all around the world celebrate theirs. And in that common celebration, even in our differences, we can find something very big, something bigger than ourselves, bigger than our differences, and bigger than some of our petty quarrels. And uh, blessed be the name of Bass Reeves, a man of incredible courage, integrity, and skill, and perhaps his memory can do something. You talk about being a touch of immortal? This man has a touch of immortality. And you know what? 
Maybe you could, too. I'm Stan Houston. Interesting ideas for this Passover day, for this Monday, Thursday. Uh, be blessed in your celebrations and uh, bless one another. Bye for now. Thank you for listening today to our story about Bass Reeves from True West Magazine. Great idea. Read it. Tell the story to others. Reach out to us, stanhouston at gmail.com. Check out our YouTube channel on how to be a world-class podcaster yourself called Reaching Your Audience. Indeed, how to be a world-class podcaster and storyteller. 520-664-7002 USA. Leave a message and tell us how we can help you have a, a touch of immortality. Yeah, let's see if we can do that. And thank you for your time. And remember that this program is brought to you by the premier podcasting and publishing company. We call it the What It Takes Radio Company. Why don't you join us? We could make great partners. Music.